super happy to have you on the podcast. Like, I feel like it's been literally since teen times that I haven't freaking seen your face. Like, I've seen you just on the gram out here stunning on the world, you know, but like, I'm throwing hella shade on the gram. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I haven't seen Terry in like a minute. How are you? Where are you? It's been a long time. Um, well, I'm good. Thanks for asking. And um, I'm in Tim Martin, bro. I was like, um, I didn't move back, but I just found myself here for for a little bit. So you know, for a little bit. I'm just trying to make the best of it. When did you get back to the island? Like I got back there like um a year ago. I was actually like I came back to like visit family, but then I mm. ended up being there for longer than I thought because like family stuff I had to deal with and like certain things from here that I had to deal with. I'm like, um, since I haven't been back in so long, I'm like re-familiarized myself with the place again. And it's kind of like I'm closing certain loose ends, kind of. Yeah. Because I haven't been back here in years. And I did, I was in Rhode Island um, right before the quarantine. But then I moved to um, Holland for a while. That was like, I was just like, that was just like my, um, I didn't know anybody there. I just moved just to move. I was like, you know what? Forget it. I was just gonna just immerse myself in something completely different, and it was it was cool. I'm glad I did that. Did you just not like Rhode Island anymore? I'm curious. Like, I guess like how was the experience there versus living in the Netherlands? <laughs> yeah, probably this. Um, it was cool. So when I got there, bro, like, um, it was so different. Like, I moved there just knowing it's gonna be different. Cause I wanted something um, I'd never been to. I'd never seen snow at that time, but I didn't know I was getting myself into till I got there and it was colder than I expected. And then I realized I was severely underprepared. Like I didn't have clothes. Like my clothes didn't like, like you know what I thought was like what I needed wasn't like it wasn't doing me anything, bro. You might as well be naked there, bro. Like I had to, like wear my like, like completely revamp my whole closet. Me experiencing the snow Dang. was like one of the worst experiences of my life, but I did it, so like it was cool. But like, um, you're like, screw that shit. No, bro, I cannot do the cold, bro. Like, I all at all, I was going to work, going to school there, like, and it's not like Saint Martin even sells winter clothes. Like, it's not like you could even put no. hair on the island to be like, okay, I was get bro. me a puffer and some sweaters. No. Yo, that was the, one of the worst experiences. Of, but I'm glad. I, it's like I, it's, it's, it's. I'm like I know it's bad. Like I never want to go back there. Like in terms of like living, but like it was good because I got to see it at least. Like you know what I mean. I got to go to school there. I appreciate my time there. But that's it for me, bro. Like the cool weather, now, like it's not for You're me. Like I've been there. So, um, done that. Done I've that, you do not nah, like check on my bucket list. That's it. it. Yep. <laughs> no, nah, cold countries are not for me, bro. Like I can't do it anymore. What did you study in Rhode Island? Um, so I did like um I have my bachelor's in marketing. And then like right before I left for Holland, I was doing my master's. I had one year left. But then um Corona, blah blah blah, Irma. So I had to like find another school. But then I didn't, like, when I got to Holland, I didn't want to do online schooling anymore. That was something I was like, no. Maybe in the future, I might see where I might go. But for now, I'm chilling. I feel you. I feel you. How was your family during Irma? Was everything good? Or, like, was it a, a lot of devastation? In, like, that's kind of the reason. In that area. Yeah. That's kind of the reason. That's kind of the reason why I've been back, to be honest, to help them. Because, like, we, like, my mom especially... She lost like her house in her in her um in her um car, so it's like she had no way of moving. So like at that time, my sister and I were still in school. This would like when I came back here, it would be like the perfect time to see them, cause I like since then like Irma happened, I didn't see them for a couple of years. So me moving back was just like a something big for me, cause I had I just had to see them. I feel you. I, so like you never like were able because I feel like also when I came to the states like I never got to go back to the island because you're just up here and so you're like trying to grind out and get everything yeah. done but then you realize like how much time you 
like just passes like, where you pass, like, aren't on exactly. the island. And like I remember even like when I first heard about Irma, it's just like you just feel alone because like nobody in America really understands. Understood what that exactly. Feels like exactly when, like, that's exactly. Your family. Yeah. And so most people just don't even care when you're like all sad and depressed and they're like, why are you sad? My island was just destroyed by a category five hurricane that we haven't seen in my entire existence. But OK, let me go take this. Exactly. Exam <laughs> like, and then on top of that, you have to deal with the snow, bro. Like you being depressed in the snow. I wouldn't wish that on my enemies, bro. Like that's you know, like I could be depressed anywhere, bro. But the snow is like a slap in the face, bro. Like every day is a struggle, bro. Like I, nah. Like I'm thankful and I'm grateful, bro. Tell me but about it. Never again. <laughs> nah. Bro. I literally have to take vitamin D now because the grayness has affected one's melanin. You know, like it's just sucks. Oh, it really. I does completely suck. forgot you in a cold place too. Harsh. Damn, my prayers. I send our prayers to you, bro. Yes, you definitely need your vitamin D, bro. Like, like. Send Why? them prayers. I need them all. Do do you do you like it there though? Like So the thing is is like Washington is stunning for nature. Right? Like don't get yeah. me wrong, the map like you know, I used to think on St. Martin we had mountains. Nah. We don't we don't have no nah, yeah, yeah, mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was out here yeah, just nah. like, Oh yeah, you know, the Cold Bay Hill. I was like, our mountain, woo woo. <laughs> yeah, that ain't a mountain. <laughs> um and so like I like I think what I appreciate about being from here is just the nature. Like it's so beautiful. Like it's a very different vibe. Like there's a lot yes. of moss covered trees and like ferns and it's like mm. very mystical, which your girl is low key like, yeah. you know, but outside of that, <laughs> like when it's gray outside, like I ain't going anywhere. Mm -mm. Exactly, bro. Like who I got to see? No. Nobody. And then I go home for a week and I'm just like, why did I ever leave St. Martin? Like, it's just so beautiful. Right? Being there, like, it makes me appreciate, like, being um, back home more. Because I know when I go there, are certain things, like, that makes me feel comfortable here. I don't have it back, what, like, wherever, exactly. like, outside of there. So I got to appreciate, like, back home more. Yeah, when exactly. I'm, like, when I come back and I see the things I took for granted and stuff, you know? So I got, like, a deeper appreciation yeah. for like St. Martin and also for my experience. So, cause I am glad I got to experience it because now I know why I don't like, so. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Like I, it's funny. Cause it's like, when I grew up there, I just took everything literally for granted. So here I'm out here thinking, I'm like, exactly. Oh yeah. America is lit. America is the place to be. And then I go to America and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I see why they come to our island now. I'm seeing it. They did when they exactly. talk about I get it. I get like it. it being gray and depressing. Like I understand now. I I see they they didn't grow up with the seasoning. There's just a lot of culture. No. It's like and it's like interesting because I never realized like how important St. Martin's culture was to me as a St. Martiner. Like you just take it for granted when it's in your face every day. But then when you're you go without it exactly. for so long, you're like something's missing. Then there's off here. Ex yeah, exactly, bro. Like, I couldn't put it into words, but it's like, I don't know. It's like you have, you almost have, like, it's almost like you're, I wouldn't say defenseless, but it's like when you go to a place that's so different from you, it's so hard for you to, like, find, like, a, something to be familiar with because everything is so new. Like, even, like, let's say you're going through something, you can't really talk to your friends about it because they're not going to understand, you know, like. On top of that, you yeah, have to exactly. deal with like missing your family, which I think like I didn't think would hit me so like so hard. But being away like makes me like have a deeper appreciation for my family or like the time we spent before I got there because I realized like those are the things that keep you going. Once you like lose touch with that, like everything become harder. Like you trying to like navigate your life, your student life, like school is crazy, and then you gotta work. And then you got to have a social life. So it's like, you know, life comes at you fast is what I'm trying to say. So if I wasn't like a person that, you know, like continuously like push through or like trying to find the positive in things, then I don't think I would have made it where I am right now. So I'm still proud of myself. It's rough out here in these streets. I feel you. It's very rough, man. Like, but I'm still glad. Look, I still say it's rough. But I still, I still got I did it. You mentioned, like, if you weren't a person that was very, like, focused on growth, 
that it would have maybe been harder. I guess, like, how did you figure out that, like, you wanted to become a person that was, like, about growth or, like, just, or I guess, like, is this, like, I'm not sure what your religious mm -hmm. or spiritual background is, but, like, I guess, like, has yeah. that influenced kind of your outlook as, like, just being a human? Yeah, because, like, growing up, I got to see different people, like, um, like, Christians and, um, different side of religions, but different religious people, whatever you religions. believe in. Um, yeah. Um, and I've also, um, I guess also that did, like my family, because I've always wanted to be better than um, myself and the environment I came from. Because when, um, before I moved to St. Martin or even moved to school, even like when I was in Haiti, like not to say like I didn't have, um, I wasn't thinking about the future, but I never thought I would leave, you know? So for me to like actually leave and be where I am is like yo crazy. That's so crazy to me, cause like every every time I'm um every time I'm like seeing the world is new to me. Cause like when I left where I came from, I didn't think I would leave. So everything is just like it was always new. I was always looking for like how to better myself. Cause I see where I came from, you know what I mean, and I see um what we have to do to like be seen you know like or be respected or whatever but i always had it in me to just be better than who i was i realized like with time i get better at things and life might test my patience but i realized that like if i stick it out a little bit more i would get what i want like or what i ask for like if i just stick it out a little bit more and just like continuously work on my craft or like work on my emotional intelligence or whatever like if i keep continuing being a better person then those things i achieve for would like come to me better like i don't know i would receive it i'll be a i'll be in a better mindset to receive it so my whole life i always i always been striving to be whatever That's better awesome. it is to me whether it be like like yeah but it didn't come without growing pains you know like things happen in my life where i, I had no choice but to be better like i had no choice but to strive for better like for myself not just for me but for my family you know that's something i always try to be yeah how was it moving from haiti to st martin very crazy that was a, that's a very yeah the, that's a very crazy story bro um um like i said like when i moved like um not many people know this haiti went through a little like civil unrest back in when did i move bro that was a, such a long time ago but in the late to early 2000s there was like a little civil war going on like so like my my the goals of my parents was to get me out of haiti quick like you just had to like if you wanted to continue like a way of life or even to go to study like we had to leave so mm. when that opportunity came my dad actually just came and just said we gotta move and like with no real preparations i think we had like two weeks to prepare to just like decide what we don't want to keep like you like like you know like or oh, like albums like memories like we have to like decide like quickly like so, yeah you know, like, the I important think that's stuff yeah i feel you yeah so i think that kind of like set the way i live my life because like i never really stay in, in one place for too long and like i could i'm used to just dropping things and then start over completely somewhere else like you know that can be good and bad, but, like, I think that made me adaptable to different stuff. I could just, um, if life or whatever, like, permits it, I, I get to go somewhere. Like, I can easily adapt, you know? And um, But that didn't come with, like, growing pains, like I said. We had to choose and that we had to say goodbye to, like, a lot of people. So when I came here, I was, like, probably, like, 10, 11, barely could speak English, you know? And then, like, I had to, like, figure it out. The, the growth from there, that's what I mean, like, from there to where I am now is crazy. Because, like, I never really thought I'd be here like that. Not to say, like, I wasn't hoping or anything, but I just never mm. imagined it. It just never was a thing for me. It was just like, oh, I'm living life, and boom, I found myself in another place. And I had to deal with it. That's so interesting. I feel like, especially yeah. as a kid, like, moving can just be so much. Because it's like, on one hand, all your, you're like, well, all my friends are here. But on the exactly. other level, your parents are like, I'm trying to set you up for success, boo-boo. Like, and I guess, like, how was it when you, like, because I feel like in St. Martin, we're, like, very diverse. But we're mm -hmm. also, like, there's, like, 
secret racism that like happens that like people never talk about but it's like it's there and like we preach we're all the friendly island which we are to certain people I'm glad but you like i'm curious like yeah what was it like for you because i know there's so much crap that people yeah. say about haitians on the island when they're like the most hardworking group of people that exactly. move to the island like it's ridiculous so, i'm glad you brought that up because like when i was telling my story i was thinking if i should go that route because like i was trying to like tell you like the overview of what's going on but since you go had that, that question, route yeah like but of course tell was, people the truth i mean okay so i, I like okay so the, um this part is actually kind of crazy looking back so like at this part of the story so when i actually got off the plane like with my i think it was it was a night I got out of the plane, it was just, um, we met my dad at the airport. It was my mom, my sister, and I. And then he sat us down and, like, basically told us, like, what we're getting ourselves into, like, a talk, like, saying, like, okay, so this is, you know, you come from this place, but you got to understand, like, here, Haitians are not really regarded as, I wouldn't say people, but they are not respected. So, like, he did, he basically give us a, a pep like a yeah a prep exactly talk, like basically saying okay don't make yourself seen you know like um do this in public don't do that in public you know like basically like trying to get us as much away from our haitian identity as possible so that we could like fit in you know what i mean like my whole life was just kind of like mm. trying to see if i could like um not like obey my dad but also like rebel like because like he basically tell me just don't be yourself be something like basically completely different but like i could i understand him growing up because like that's something like he his generation had to do to like get jobs or blah blah but me i always felt like that was wrong so it's like I, it was just like i always had to find a way to like be myself but also try not to stick out too much so like that was my challenge going up but my dad did sit us down told us you know don't wear this don't wear that and then like it was sad because like when i actually got to school there was a lot of friends that i made was like they were secretly haitians like they would never admit to like people that like their parents are haitians they you never catch them speaking creole so like that was like my high school days like just basically making friends that were secretly haitians they didn't want to be outed you know as being haitians so like um I, when i my first year of school there was that like when they asked me to introduce myself and i was like yeah blah 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 my name is this i da 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 um this i'm 12 whatever blah 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 and like when i got to like where i was from everybody was debating if i was actually haitian because i was like oh but you don't do this how can you be haitian you sure your mom probably is from somewhere else your dad probably i'm like nah bro I was born and raised in Haiti, yeah. but, like, I just got here. But, like, there was, like, a little discussion, too. People didn't really actually believe. Even the teacher didn't even believe that I was Haitian. So that was the state of, like, my, my um, like, my teen years. That was, like, you know, people just not being, like, judging me just because before they even knew me, you know. And, like, one thing, too, in high yeah. school, they, they had this thing. It's really like, annoying. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. They would be, like, back then they used to say, like, oh, you look so Haitian, like that used to be like the the insult of like you, you don't have you don't have to be Haitian to be called you so Haitian, but it was just like the thing that people used to call. That kind of also played a role in me not yeah. coming back for a long time. I realize that now, but then so it's just like because I left it at that state, it's very hard for me to see past that now. Like sometimes you know it's good to like see the progress we made, but yeah, I don't, like it's not easily you can't really forget that era you know because like if you ask any haitian they will they will tell you about that same thing i just said because a lot of people were struggling with like the identity and what they should be in public because you know but it was a loaded question i hope i answered it quick like you know but there was all, all like a lot of crap oh in no that you happened. did fantastic i think it's absolutely ridiculous because it's like it's very much like if you're Haitian, it's like, oh, you're a smelly, dirty, like immigrant person who's just here to like exactly. sell some souvenirs to a bunch of white people and send yeah. your money back to Haiti. And like for whatever reason, you can't be a clean, intelligent, a successful yeah. individual if you're from Haiti. And this I just it never made sense to me like why people, especially Caribbean people, Caribbean pe you say yeah, these like types of narratives, given the fact that like the history of the caribbean and the fact that a lot of people are free as 
free people because of the the risk that Haitians took to rebel against the slave institution. Like, I'm just like, guys, like, how are you so disrespectful to a people that literally... And still paying. They're still they're still paying. Exactly. And, like, they're still paying for that fact that they had the courage to stand up for their rights, which exactly. is ridiculous. Like, it surprised... I remember when I learned that in history class, that Haiti was still paying France for their freedom. I was like... Till this day, so you bro. You need to tell me... You enslave them, you enslave them, they rebel because they're like, I don't want to be enslaved. Yeah. And they're like, okay, you can be free, but you just have to pay me all the money you're ever going to make yeah. in the rest of your life because I feel like I'm losing out on, on because I'm letting you go free. Yeah, like you're basically like making the logic. Me money, so then you have to make it back for like for my efforts of enslaving you and failing. So like you have to pay me back. How dare you rebel? It's kind of it's kind of messed up, bro. Because like it's one thing to expect it from like the usual en like enemies, like let's say like you know like it's not kinda. It is. It is yeah, messed yeah, up. Like, cause you know, but to see that from our own Caribbean, like um, people, like you know, like brothers and sisters, to actually get the word, like you know, you you would expect them to understand, cause some countries are still now being like um independent exactly. they're just now getting to independence and you look at haiti some like the first nation to actually like do it and then like they didn't really stop there like haitians play part in a lot of history we barely get acknowledged like like you know what i mean like or help or whatever like we just get it everywhere we get the worst of it so that was me growing up like trying to like like find out who i am as a person and also like fighting the identity like me being a haitian you know come like haitian background my parents are haitian you know what i mean dealing with that and how people react to me when they see me or when they know that i'm haitian now it's kind of like different but like you still don't forget you know yeah because it's just something that lives with you like you know at the back of your head that there are some people out there that when they hear that you are haitian are already gonna be like oh you know yeah okay. before, yeah before they even meet me they already like you know did you so know I terry was haitian <laughs> you know like yeah, exactly yeah, yeah 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 exactly bro so like yeah i had to deal with that but honestly i think like that's shaping me into the i don't like shaping me into the person that i am that also plays a part but at the same time it's not pleasant to go through you know i see some people like rather pretend like that era exactly. never happened it's trauma on but, some level and you have to work through it exactly and like you remember like especially now like because imagine is so small bro it's like it's you can you could see like the people that used to like you know be that kind of person try not like try their best to i don't know now i don't know if they're trying to change or it's like they're not they're not um trying to like hide the past or something but that's something like i feel like it's not really talked about, but when you're on the island, you see the same people every day, you know, it's kind of hard not to. I feel you. It's, I feel like it's hard for us to change because, like, I feel like never in St. Martin do we ever have, like, an actual debate or conversation about the things that bother us as St. Martiners. So it's like... exactly. Whenever, like, I feel like you will never see in the Herald Haitians community saying, stop talking shit about us. Like, you will never, never. see that, you know, as a headline. But it's like a conversation that I feel that like needs, to, needs be to be had. Because, like, as much as we preach, like, we're the friendly island, we have so much, there's so much, like, just, like, stereotyping, yeah. like, just subtle racism, microaggressions, yeah. and hatred towards that. foreigners that, exactly. like, never gets discussed like never gets discussed like never and it's like we just end up pointing fingers at people and they're like oh it's your fault it's your fault and it's like guys there are so many people at fault in this but we each have to look at, at least within ourselves to be like what role am i playing in exactly. the propagation of this bull crap you know what i mean exactly i feel like someone still like still has a long way to go but i don't know like I, okay on like an individual level like me meeting certain people i see the change like like small like small little change like in the way we interact with each other but collectively i don't think we we're, we're there yet or even if we're gonna be there but like i just feel like the first step in all this is just acknowledge it like it's there don't like you know like act like it didn't happen i feel like yeah, this is exactly. one of many issues that we don't talk about like like, St. Martin have a lot of, like, 
stuff that we sweep under the rug and the things that we actually talk about is i feel like it's pointless like certain crap we talk about about like um exactly whether or not if we should change exactly. from, to tourism at this day and age i think the answer is pretty clear that we need more than tourism like this question every year like is that oh should we do this should we do that like yes we should do all of everything you know what i mean like this this like if whether or not if we should shoot um, <laughs> you're like all of this, it check every yeah, box yeah, change, change everything bro like the country need a whole facelift like you're talking about like how we're gonna get jobs but we have to get the people motivated enough to like see like the changes that they've been asking exactly. for for years bro like we need real change not like oh yeah i'm gonna fix the road maybe like like no nah, bro we need those questions are just really really minuscule like i feel like corona like the pandemic actually shows how behind we are like with everything like in terms of like where we place that in the world like i think we should stop trying to become the friendly island and just be a progressive island like the first island that actually listens to its people and exactly do what it's supposed to do can we just be I feel like we Martin, do have the resources preach exactly like we we have the minds like we, do. We, have, we have so many talented young minds but i feel like the powers that be is trying to doesn't want that to happen but at the same time bro we can't stop saying wash it exactly but yeah like and i believe it's happening like i really do see it happening and they can't stop but it's gonna happen one way or the other because it's like we need it like the island needs it so much and it's like i want it for the island so badly yeah. that i'm like i don't really care who say they're gonna be in my way because i'm gonna still push through exactly like because at this point it's like that's that's all we can do like like because i don't see it like if you know a better way or if you think the island should go in the next week like like another way whatever like you should be the one that like um push through like if you have a, like a radical like a crazy idea that you think might work and you don't have the support then i feel like you st- you should still push through or still be what you think the island needs because like we're not we're never like gonna get the support from government like we're never gonna there's never gonna be enough funding there's never gonna be enough whatever the things that we need so exactly like might as well make this a way of life you know what i mean because i i don't know about anybody else but i can't live any other way than the way i'm supposed to live like the way like the impact i'm supposed to make i i can't see myself doing it like any other thing so like i'm hoping whatever i'm doing is Im- anything less i feel you You know what i mean because it's better than just sitting around and waiting for this man and them to like okay yeah this need like you know like i just want to keep it moving and <laughs> keep it pushing bro like i don't have time to complain to, to government and like ask questions because i feel like they know what's up it's just like it benefits you know you're not even gonna get an answer from them exactly it benefits them more that we are like this so like it's okay like they could be on the wrong side of change but change will happen whether you want it or not but change is gonna happen bro so wait yeah i was gonna ask you like what led you to joining teen times because i feel like when you join like when i joined you were already there so i'm curious like what what led you to the paper? What led me was actually one of my English teachers. Like, I used to love writing, and she used to, like, encourage me. At first, I didn't like it. I know that, like, I just wrote because, you know, there's essays on exams. You just have to be better at it because that's, like, 60% or some sh- like of your grade, so you have to be good at writing essays. But my English teacher, okay. Miss <laughs> Lucas, shout out to Miss Lucas, bro, if you listen to this what, what podcast, you changed my life. But, like, she made me fall in love with English, like, writing in, like, write in English, Aww. like, um, like, she, like, there's so many ways to say, like, different things, like, you know, especially when you're being descriptive about, like, a, you know, like, when she, when they give you, like, a certain um, word limit and you have to be creative how you use that, like, I think that was a fun challenge for me. She made it fun because she, like, the way she taught me made me, like, feel like I could write stories. So, like, um, one thing led to another. Like, I think some of my classmates joined first. And I was, like, I was skeptical at first because, like, back then I was, I never really wanted to be in groups because groups, like, make me anxious back then, you know. So I was, like, I had my reservations. But 
once I joined, bro, I was like, this is actually cool, bro. Like, I could write at my own pace. I could, like, um, Mike said I could write, like, at that time, like, he gave me freedom, kind of, like, with a little structure. I could write about anything I felt like writing, and I just felt like, you know, it was a good choice for me because I enjoyed write, writing. And then, like, all the other aspects of team times, like, you know, community service, planning events, was just, like, a bonus to me. So it was just, like... Yeah, like, it was just my love of writing got me to 10 times, basically. Sweet. No, I love it because it's, like, what I love most outside of the writing and actually being given the permission to say what I wanted to say. Because, like, yes. typically as a child, like, nobody would ever really take you seriously if you had an opinion. Exactly. But Mike actually, exactly. like, let you share your opinion with others. And, like, actually, like, even respected your opinions to be, like, oh, yeah, exactly, like, that's actually yeah. a really valid point. Like, this is a beautiful piece. I'm very proud of you. But what I love more was all of you. Like, I love just being around you guys because, like, we were all from different schools. And I feel like it was just awesome to learn from, from different people's people. life. Yeah, yes, exactly. It was dope. And the part that kind of, like, our word, like, the things that we wrote about, like, in the paper, like, actually, like, had an impact. Because sometimes we would keep some certain, some of us would get in trouble for writing, like, certain articles which like was surprising to me because I didn't think a lot of people would be reading it. But yeah, no, it was ridiculous that schools would get upset at students for free speech. For and free, I'm like, yo, that was so crazy to me, like to experience that. Is, like this is free speech. But I thought that was like cool. I, th I actually thought like I actually felt that was like um, my favorite part of it, that we got in trouble kind of because it's like kind of like people are like, paying attention you know like we actually you're like were... this is an act of rebellion yeah yeah, like, I yeah was like, exactly hell yeah bro like that made me even more like to speak my mind or learn better like like even better ways of like expressing myself and like even if i could help like even before we get to write like the articles like for me the best part too was like when we got to discuss like you know like when when we had the meetings we would discuss about like different topics and we got to hear from like different groups you know that was like my favorite part if i'm not mistaken like other than like writing the actual articles but discussing like the articles before we wrote them was like i, I really fuck mm. with it. i love the different perspectives i love like we were all from different backgrounds different schools exactly. just different upbringing and like just being able to hear what like everybody's thoughts were about like issues that were important to us was incredible but yeah no the fact that these schools try to like threaten students is really straight up <laughs> ridiculous for telling the truth too. not even like just because it didn't line up with their propaganda. Yeah, like, they were like, was, you that... can't say that about us. And we're like, but it's the okay, truth. Then change your... But it's the truth. It's the truth. Like, bro, but like, it's the yeah, truth. Bro. <laughs> it was so crazy. Like, like the, um, some like they was go as far as to like threaten the students, which I find that was very like that was really crazy. I'm trying to think because we didn't we didn't fully dive into the religion spirituality because I know like along with like the terrible stereotypes like people always say shit about Haitians like y'all practice voodoo or whatever which is just, mm -hmm. I mean I don't really uh, know yeah, the yeah, full yeah. depth you know That's but good... it's like I'm curious like what is your religious background as a hate or like what is like the 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 religious journey that most Haitians go through or I don't know if maybe your family was different from that, but then I'm curious, like oh, okay. how that has developed into your worldview today. Um. Okay. So, like, yeah, that's. I'm glad you asked those questions, girl, because I was avoid, like, not avoiding, but it's kind of like I don't know how other people is gonna take it, so I don't really like talk about it much. It's but nervous. You, I feel you. You know what I mean? But since you asked, bro, like, no, it's because like not much people actually ever asked, or I've never really talk about it but since i think I it's because no, people like, are scared to ask about it, but, you know well actually yeah 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 like yeah but either way um like i'm just gonna tell you but um so i grew up um catholic like half of my family is like completely catholic like like my cousins i have cousins that are nuns like they were like they went into the convent oh, wow. blah, blah, when they were like in their 20s yeah, like, so I have, like, both, like, one side of my family is completely religious, bro. Like, like, I um, mean, like, Christian, Christianity is a big thing. Um, the other side now is, like, completely, not completely, but mostly on the voodoo side. Like, so we have, like, two sides clashing. Not, cla I wouldn't say clashing, but, like, 
They're just contrast. Yeah, so that's basically my my um what that was my background. So two completely like one side was this, one side of that. So and then I was like in the middle. I was like right smack mm-hmm. dab in the middle and like so because I had like such a intimate relationship with both religion as like some of my family members were Catholic, some of my family members were like like voodoo priest or like into the voodoo lifestyle. So like what that made me like I saw two completely different That's sides. That's cool. Yeah, I like yeah. So like I got to see com- two completely different sides of the of both sides. So it's like you have the Christians who pray to God, blah, 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 go to church. But I also see how they live their life. Like some some of them live a life that's completely different from what they preach about. So you see the disconnect. Like Like you go to church like, on Sunday, like, but you were at the strip club on Saturday yeah, you know, kind of living. I feel exactly. you. <laughs> so, so you see the disconnect. So like as a kid, like me, like I see that, but I'm going to explain how that changed my mind. But, like, I saw the disconnect, like, at a young age, like, you know, like, the pastors doing things behind the scenes or, like, you know, like, you hear different stories here and there. So that was, like, the Christian side. But, like, with the voodoo side now, like, with voodoo, it's 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 not much of a religion but a lifestyle. Like, you have to live mm. a certain way. Like, there is no, there is no, like, like, I wouldn't say leeway that's leeway like you get to live basically you live off the land that's like basically that's the basics of like voodoo like everything you use blah mm-hmm. blah you take you take it from the land and you put it back in the land you know what i mean so that's more of like a lifestyle that you live that they could have yeah it could be any type uh we could be anything uh, uh different kind of person you are blah, blah blah but you have to live a certain lifestyle so there's not really a gap between what they do and what they say because they actually live it like every single day so i see that's that's the difference between like um the like i'm talking really um collectively i don't like piss off anybody yeah. like, oh, why is that, that? but that was just <laughs> that's just my um that's just how i grew up guys like you know what i mean like i'm not trying to make any like play for any different blah blah, blah. but i did go to church i like i was i um i went to communion blah blah, blah. did the whole i was baptized the whole period, bro, I did it. But then as to, like, what my views were, mm-hmm. I was, like, I see both sides, so I kind of, like, walk a line, like, like in the middle. Like, I do believe in God, and I do believe uh, um, in all that, but, like, my relationship with God, how I build a relationship with God is very different. I feel like I have a more mm-hmm. intimate um, um, relationship with the universe, like then, because I, I'm, I feel like I'm more open to what, like, where the answers to my question might lie. Like, I'm not like, oh, it could only mm. come from like this thing if I do this, blah, blah blah. But I got like, I got to see life as a whole, bro. Like, I got to see like different aspects of life. Like, I learn about duality. I learn, like, you know what I mean? There's, there's more, like, there's more to life than like. You know, there's the way you live it, the way you um, interact with people that matters. So, like, that kind of shape, like, my mindset and how I move in the world. Because, like, I know there's more beyond than what society likes to see. And then, like, and I know that because um, society looks, like, um, for things externally, they don't look for answers, like, internally. Like, we miss a lot of things when we don't pay attention to our, like... Like, cause I feel like being, for exactly. me, all the answers that we could ever, yeah, exactly. All the answers that we could ever have or, or like, or hear, like, it's not outside of us. It's not outside of the earth. It's not like, it's here, bro. Like, you know what I mean? So like, Preach. It, uh, at a young age, I didn't start looking for my validation outside. Like, of course I had like, you know, like growing up, growing pains and blah, blah. But to learn that I had to go through a bunch of crap. But when, once I finally learned that everything I could ever need is, like, in me already, bro, I just have to just, like, kind of connect to it or just surround myself with people that are there or, like, put myself in a different environment where I could grow to be that person. But I always find that, like, mm. any answer that I ever ask, everything I ever ask myself or talk to the universe about is being answered right now. You know what I mean? I didn't have to go externally. I didn't have to do any crazy rituals or whatever. But, like, I just feel like that just made me recognize where the answers might lie or where to look for them because i do pray but i also do like um appreciate 
the earth because that's what gave me life that's what sustains me so i have to like watch how i move because like you wouldn't want to like the earth is kind of like your house bro like you wouldn't want to like like you know like mess it show, up like dirty your house blah, blah blah and still expect exactly and still expect it to serve you you feel me like you gotta like give back like you know take care of the place that birth you the, take care of the place that that give you food that give you life basically bro because if the earth is gone earth is gone we're gone like there's no debate bro if this shit is gone we're all gone g so it makes sense to try to preserve the things hey elon trying to get us to mars terry you know <laughs> other people could go to mars bro but i'm still have i still have unfinished business here on earth bro like like you know what i mean like it's cool but like i feel like, like people, they could go i'm gonna stay <laughs> they could go bro they're, they're, i feel like everybody that want to go to mars you could go to mars like just leave us earthers I think I'll be an earther. Like, I'll, I'll stay here, bro. Like, I'll chill here. Take all the whatever the fuck, bro. I'll be here, bro. Because, like, even, like, through the pandemic. You wouldn't go on vacation, Hol- though? Of course, of course, I would go. Like, oh, wait, wait, wait. On Mars? Yeah, imagine if that was the reality. Like, you could just go on vacation. Mm, nah, nah, nah. Be like, yeah, I'm just going what? to, you know, Mars Sector 4 for the summer. I'm going to be back in, like, six months. You wouldn't want to live there permanently. But if you could go visit it, just so you could be like, Terry been to Mars, check. That's like... Check, you know what I mean? Maybe. But we'll see for life, I'll, I'll be like... Yeah, I'll be like Earth for life though. Like I'll be in Earth, bro. There's so many places I haven't I seen you. on Earth. So, but yeah, I'd probably go visit. But Earth, I'll stay on Earth. I feel like if everybody leaves, then like the planet, the planet would kind of like fix itself. Cause you see a little bit of that in the pandemic when like people wasn't going outside, the animals were starting to go back outside. Plants, the 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 sky was like blue, the ocean was oceaning. Like you know, the Clean. earth was doing its thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, bro. the like, ocean was oceaning. <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything was just like kind of like you know. That was like wow. It's kind of like we just had to just get out of the way. So if you guys just want to go to Mars and just lighten the load real quick, go ahead, bro. Because you like so leave. Many- like go, go. Ahead. i was like yeah we bro. want you here anyways anyways bro the earth don't even want half of us here anyway so but yeah so growing up i just I had like you. i just put the earth or like just my environment like that's the most important place you could be so like start with that like you know start with taking care of that and then eventually that would trickle down internally because who you would want to take care of yourself and then, like, you know, and then, like, that extends to your friends and blah. And then next thing you know, boom, we're changing the world, bro. Like, it's so simple, but, like, it's, yeah, like, you have to start with yourself, fam. Exactly. That's so awesome. Like, I wonder sometimes if it's, like, because we grew up in St. Martin, like, why we have this deep appreciation for nature. Like, I always felt like, at least, like, when I was a kid, like, a lot of our teachers, but I feel like also just being on the island, like, put a big emphasis on, like, beach cleanups and just, like, caring for nature and like understanding our relationship and connection to nature that for me it makes sense like i don't understand why people would ever want to hurt planet earth i'm like this place is everything like it's so freaking stunning and we get to be born here and y'all want to ruin this for everybody exactly bro exactly like when things like when um, makes no sense when i look at the world and you look at like the stuff that's like happening you know bad shit happens but then you also look like when you look at nature it's almost like you see like um i don't know like you appreciate outside like for like you know you are like you could just look to just look at the trees yeah, or, exactly. it kind of sound like it might sound like cliche and like hippie ish to some people but once you're really in nature bro you realize like you connect with something like you realize how like not i wouldn't say small we are but like how much we need the environment bro like how much we like rely on everything for the like you know like um for clean air like clean water like stuff that we take for granted bro like if, everything if it was taken away or quality of life we, we take just it for granted it does, exactly it wouldn't matter how much money you have we dead we are dead the bees are gone we're dead you dead bro like you understand like so you have like you have to take care of, like you have to just like appreciate what like this like life might be life in general might be ass but the earth you know what i mean like it's still like 
the thing we need, bro. Like, if that's gone, then... This place, though, is not ass. Yeah, exactly. Then it's nothing. None of us exist. None of this happens if the earth is not yeah. good. Yeah, bro. I feel like we all should, like, have, like, a, that mentality in mind to, like, okay. Like, shit happens, yeah, but we still have to clean up the earth. Like, you know, we can just let shit be. Like, this is for, like, this is for more than just us yeah, exactly. now it's for like the, like your kids and their kids and you know what i mean that's like it's the most unselfish thing we could do yeah bro like yeah just live i just feel like i i want just want to leave this place a little bit better than what i found that's in it. it that's it that's literally it then just be the best you you know whatever that might be just be true to you and then the exactly. earth will thank you. Like, just be a good person. Thank like, you for it, bro. Without the fame, just be decent. without the credit, exactly. just be a good person, period. Just be decent, bro. Don't even announce it. Just be, boom, different. And then... Can I just say, because yeah. I've been thinking this, like, I feel like ever since I've met you, but I've never said this to your face, so I want to tell you, because... I be thinking this every time I see you, but I'm like, and I'm always in awe because like, I love your aesthetic. I don't know what it is. If it's your face, your hair, like your whole vibe, <laughs> yeah. like it's very like islandy, but like basket, if you get what I'm saying. Like, and I just like, every time I look at you, I'm like, Terry is like literally a, fa a fashion icon. Like, like you're going to be like Virgil, you know, just creating some wild off white kind of you know just awesomeness yeah like, every time dope. i see that'd you i just like think this like i'm like i can't wait for terry i'm like i'm just ready to buy whatever terry makes in the future because i'm like he there's oh, just a that, vibe that's so about nice him. to see like, that's nice to see bro you just like, made my day know. bro that's that thank you <laughs> thank you for saying Aww. that bro yeah because every time i see you i always think this i'm like I'm like, this dude has such a vibe. And I'm like, what the hell is it? But I know I like to be in your company. Like, even when we were in Teen Times and stuff, I was always like, yeah, Terry's just back there chilling in his yo, vibe. Yo, and I'm cool, just like, yeah. I was like, too cool. Too cool for school. <laughs> no, but like, um, I was just like, I'm, I'm a nerd in my corner. Just let me be. No, nah, I mean, no, you were, you were like, no, nah, I think you still were cool, bro. Like, especially in Teen Times, I enjoy like your input, your inputs on a lot Aww. of things. And, like, um, we agree a lot on the same things. I feel like that's why we, like, this can happen. Because, like, um, and I f what I admired about you, though, like, you wasn't afraid. Because you was one of the people that was, like, um, getting harassed, if I'm not mistaken, for your art articles, too. I got what? Harassed? Like, like, yeah, like, by teachers and stuff for your, like, opinions and stuff, like, on the article. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I feel you. They didn't like when I had anything to say. This is true. But that didn't stop you, though. It's hard because it's like, I feel like the reason why it didn't stop me is because I love myself, Terry, so much. And my parents have, like, really, I think, built my confidence so much. So, like, if, if I can say something to my parents and they're like, oh, yeah, I agree. I see where you're coming from. Then I really don't care what anybody else says. So it's like if my parents are like, yeah. yes. Or sure, you are swearing a lot in your podcast, but you're saying good stuff. <laughs> then I'm like, good. That's yes. all I need to hear. I could continue I doing it, exactly like, what I'm doing. If if Nick exactly. and Sharon aren't like, you're going too far, then I'm like, cool. So I really could care less what anybody else says. Like the people that birth me are happy with the legacy that I'm building for our family, and that's all that matters. That's cool. That's that's why like when back then when I saw that like it kind of like inspired me too from doing the same things because like. The way Aww. you um express yourself, like that's like I, it aligned with the way I wanted to, like the way like you command like uh attention to like like every word you say had it like a uh, intent uh, intent behind it. So like I really like that, like especially like you had the facts to back up your your points. Aww. So like I really like when like when um like my peers can actually like you know because I could look up to them too because it makes it easier for me to like you know be like kind of like mo like model myself after that because that's something i really appreciate and like i really like try to em like yeah. emulate is that the word emulate yeah Aww. that's something yeah so it's gonna have glad yeah, that you yeah. know like that's the right word <laughs> i'm glad like we, we got to be in the same group and I, i'm glad i got to meet a lot of people like because they do i don't know like ralph if you've seen what, what ralph is doing too like your big ups to ralph bro. ralph like, is out here killing the, it yeah, bro, yo, like, he makes Ralph me proud every here. time. Like, he wanted to be a journalist. He did it. 
he's yeah, out here but, thriving. But he like he's doing it, everything bro. he like, said he wanted to do, and that just makes me so happy. That's why I like, bro. Like I like seeing my peers, like seeing, like, cause that actually motivates me to actually, like, you know, keep doing, going to exactly. what I'm, like, what I'm exactly. doing and like keep just at it. Cause like when I like sometimes when I since I've been back and I I hear him on the radio, I'm like, yo, bro. And every time I hear him, bro, I'm clapping. Like there's nobody in a car, bro, but I'm clapping. I'm like, yo, Raph is really doing yeah. this. Bro. Like, yeah. So like whenever I see like our peers or just anybody from our group just doing things, I'm like, yo, look at us, bro. So inspirational, bro. Like we were just here and we just doing just different things. And I'm just happy, bro, to just knowing you guys and like like you know what I mean? Just big up to the whole team times team, you know what I mean? Like I feel they're doing you. the thing, bro. I feel you. Yeah. I, I love it. I love the fam. Like, y'all are always fam for life. Like, literally oh, yeah, fam bro. for life. Like, I for life, will for never, life. I feel like, like, no matter how old I am, no matter what I accomplish, like, Teen Times is 100% always my family. St. Martin is my family. Like, yeah, I can't be who I am if it wasn't for you guys. And so, like, like, I like what you said. Like, I love to see my friends doing well. And it, it like you said, it is inspiring because then it's like, okay, yes. bet, like, I can go out and do this. Like, you know I should I mean? be out here trying to create trying. stuff to show other people, like, you can do it too. Like, we can yeah, all bro. do it. Like, try something. Go out we, there. Give it I a like, try. We never, you never like, know. I'm glad that they didn't wait on, like, something to happen. They just wait. Like, just went and do, like, to whatever field you wanted to do and just just start Let's go and like i'm like what however you look just start i like that because like I, I like that we all on that same like kind of mindset we might not be doing exactly the same things but we are doing things that like we're passionate about and i could see it like you could see it in like the um exactly um, in your in your um your product the way you put out your stuff or whatever you do you could see the passion and how much it takes because like this is this is not easy i feel like if you didn't love it you wouldn't you, didn't, you wouldn't be doing this so like that's why I appreciate when, like, I see my friends exactly. or just my peers in general doing things cool, like cool things that's never been done before, or taking a place of somebody that done it, and it's just like, you know, just like the the next, like I don't know, just taking over whatever we do. I I just like I love it, bro. Like I like that. I'm excited. It just makes me pumped for the future because I'm just like Ben. Exactly. Like I can't wait for everybody to just start doing their thing so that I can start supporting my people. Like I just the thing exactly. that I love most is being able to just see my St. Martiners thrive. Like that just br brings me so much joy because I'm like, this is what I want for my people. Like of course, exactly. Like why would I and ever like, not you want you to be great, because... to be happy? And I feel like we appreciate, like, um, at least for me, because, like, we know what we came from and we know what we had to deal with, like, from where, like, we started exactly. to where we are now and, like, where we're going. It's, like, it's exciting, bro, because we all came from this little place and we're all trying to, like, better ourselves. So it's, like, I feel like I'm in great company. Make just it. By knowing yeah, you guys, better you know? ourselves. Exactly. Oh, yeah. you are a fantastic company. Like, I'm just trying to build my riches so I can just be like, okay, so and so, so and so, come to my crib and let's just chill and like think about building stuff and like creating brands. Bro, and, like, that's my kind of build goal, merch dog. Or products that we can influence exactly, the world. Bro. I can't wait to like, get literally, to that I just point, want bro. to be like, Terry, come over. We finna have a sesh. You don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm pulling up. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, I don't know if you saw this on Instagram. Um, like, people were sharing this thing about, um, like, Gunna recorded his number one album in St. Martin. And I was like, okay, and yes. why aren't we recording other fantastic albums in, in St. Martin? Yo, but that's, yo, you just touched on something that's so crazy, right? Like, because we have such a, like, talent pool here, bro. We have talented, like, producers. Exactly. Talented artists, like, bro, like, and, like, people from outside are starting to notice it because, you know, they pass through the island. It's, it's hard not to, like, if you look in, in the right places, bro, exactly. it's so hard not. It's, it's like, you will see what everybody else is starting to see because, like, you're starting to see, like, a little small small little wave coming like we in like i it's crazy that nobody that's in power right now or like seeing it and trying to ride the wave but the right they don't people see are it. seeing yeah, it yeah they not but seeing like, it stuff like that like i'm seeing it exactly 
stuff like that is happening like um more often now because like other than like more artists are starting to pop out because like i was just out like probably like a week or two weeks ago i was just out and Puevo just walked in just like casually walking in like more stars are like coming down here like you know what i mean and actually like working with local artists so i'm kind of really excited for the future bro like say marina have like like if we do this properly we uh, we could really like be the next like wave bro like easily because like it's we have so many so much talents not to bro like easily. we have dancers bro singers out like create we all just have crazy talents over here bro it's crazy like we have it's, it's everything time, bro. everything you could be looking for it's say there, martin it's got here. it somewhere it's somebody true, bro, know like, how it's there slowly but surely bro like things are changing and it's i'm just glad that belief bro. Exactly. And the support, I mean, yes, in the support, bro, like, I feel like we're never going to get enough support from, like, the, the, the people that we're supposed to get support from. But at the same time, I love that that's not stopping us or, like, most of us. It would be nice. But, like, I love that that's not, like, stopping us from achieving. And I also feel like that's, like, push. Like, I feel like that's that's one of the factors that motivates us to do better because we know we don't have the proper support. So, like, that kind of pushes well, me anyway to, like, keep going and, like, be self, like, sustainable and, you know? But that pushed me, bro, like, when nobody's yeah, exactly. looking in your direction. Exactly. Yeah. I feel you. One thing I did want to ask you about that's, like, completely... Because we went all positive, but, like, now I want to get a little <laughs> negative, you know? So, I remember, like, on Instagram, you were sharing this thing about, like, red flags and, like, what were your red flags? So, I'm curious, like, Terry, what are your relationship red flags? <laughs> oh, crap, bro. Just, oh, okay. Um, all right. Um, my red flags. Um, okay, so... Wow, okay, that's a loaded question. Okay, my red flag, bro, I would say that, like, um, sometimes I could be either, like, too emotional, like, my re reaction, or, like, not at all. Like, I could be, like, really, like, yo, blah, like, really active, or, like, really, like, nothing. Like, but I, sometimes I don't get to choose which situation, sometimes your situation might, want, like, warrant me to be more, like, you know, more reactive, but then I would be more, like, passive, you know what I mean? Like, that's probably, like, I don't know, that's my red, that's one of my red flags, sorry, like, like, sometimes I'm hot or cold, I'm hot and cold, doesn't matter. I think it's because of my, my sign, if you had, like, I'm, I'm a Sagittarius. So we don't really stay in like, like a certain. I feel like Sagittarius are like wild, aren't they? Like every they are, Sagittarius bro. I know is a little just wild. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it all depends on your like other like elements in your charge. Like, I don't know if you want to go into astrology, but like there's other crap that make up your personality. But like <laughs> my nature You're to like, be like, what is your your seventh house? You know, or whatever. Yeah, you know, I mean, like we don't have to get that deep, but like you know what I mean. But yeah, like I think that definitely like my personality, I could be hard and cold, bro. Like you never know. Like I surprise myself sometimes. Like, he does. I'm like, oh, damn, bro. I really don't care about this. Or, yeah. Like, do you have any for girls that you're like, if this girl exhibits traits X, Y, and Z, it's a straight up, no, no. We oh, walk yeah, away. Bro, we I, go I, into I, yes. our bed. And we stay in put. It's for sure, bro. Um, One thing, too, like, um, I think it's a red flag Um, would be, like, if somebody, like, like, let's say we're trying to, like, we're talking or whatever, and you mention somebody else that's kind of, like, your ex or somebody you're talking to that is a straight red flag for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if your ex is still present in your life, red flag. Or if you talk bad about your ex, bro, like, like I don't care, bro, <laughs> like, if that person, like, cheated, blah, blah. You're supposed to learn from it. And if you're telling me, like, um yeah he was this he was that like that's all you're saying that's a red flag for me like, like i look like you know i don't know i don't like because at that like at a certain point that person was all you wanted and then now you're just like bashing them you know what i mean it was like where's the love i get it but if you just like straight up bad talk your ex every he was ugly anyways that's a red f yeah red flag bro like or yeah i think those are the two most important ones for me like or if you're like um 
what else bro like you really just put me in a spot because now i'm just thinking about stuff but those are the two main ones, i'm just bro. like trying like, to think of funny ones like if she has an only fans red flag if he doesn't have a cent to his name and he's like 30 and lives with his parents with no ambitions red flag yeah <laughs> Yes, those things like oh, even but like for me, it depends what's on her OnlyFans. You know, is it feet pictures well, honest, or you know? To be honest with you, bro, the OnlyFans is not a deal breaker for me. Like it's not like if you have an OnlyFans, get it how you live, bro. Make that. Feel money, like I'm gonna let her like, get I'm, her money. <laughs> of course, <laughs> like, bro. What there's get there's that demand, money. bro. It's like I get it in Go real ahead. life. Make your money, bro. Especially during like this is a hard time we are going through. And if you feel like like you have an a nice audience or a nice target um audience on on, on that you could make money off of, pff, go ahead, make that money, bro. We're going to take trips. We eating out anyway, so you know what I mean. Like we sharing the wealth, so it's cool, bro. We just got like you know what I mean. I don't really have restrictions <laughs> on my ladies. They could do whatever they like, please. I'm not their <laughs> parent. But the only fans for me is not a... It's just how you treat people and basically how you treat yourself. What is your dream, girl? Like, what are the characteristics you're looking for, like, as a wifey? Like, what what traits does she need to have to be able to put a ring on Terry? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I never really... I Honestly, I don't really think I have a type, bro. Like, like... I just like decent people. Like, I don't know, like, just be, just be who you say you are. I don't really have any, like, oh, you have to have this. Like, you have to be this. You have to at least have that. Nah, I don't really care about that crap, bro. If, like, if you, if you cool as hell, bro, we could, if I could have, like, sit down and have a real conversation with you and, like, we could just vibe, like, I, we could have, like, good conversations or, if we just like click you know what i mean and i'm cool bro i don't have to you don't have to change this or do that to be with terry bro just be you and then we'll click and then boom that's it <laughs> like terry loves all he just is like vibe with me girl and we could journey through this life together yeah, let's have a conversation let's be cool that's it bro let's create together bro if we can't do that then I'm probably not having a conversation with you anyway, you know? So it's like, if I could talk to you, good vibe, be like, you are a decent person, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta be cool, bro. Like, it, being mean is so, like, okay, I don't like, okay, if I don't, okay, I don't have a type, but I don't like mean girls. I'm sorry. I don't like mean girls, bro. So, like, if you mean, like, uh, I'm so sorry, bro. I'm like, I don't like that. Like, there's no reason, like, you can't, like, if you're mean, unprovoked, bro, like, that's a big red flag, dog. Like, you just mean to be mean, bro. Like, nah. I don't like mean girls. They could stay away from me. But everybody else, yeah, come true. <laughs> I feel like, I guess, how can people, like, if they want to keep up with Terry or if they want to, like, book you for photos or if they just want to, like, see what your vibe is and see who this island basket figure that Nicole's describing is, how, how can people find you follow you connect with you try to create with you collabs all that all that good stuff right now since like i've took a little i like i hate this like before this since like because i was dealing with everything crap like because i just started opening myself back up to mm. collabing with people blah blah so if you're interested in like booking me working with me like um i'm in the process of creating my website but you could still get in contact with me on Instagram, what? Blood Carnival, on Instagram, and um, on Twitter. Yeah, those are two platforms that like I'm active on. If you go on my um, Instagram, Blood Carnival, I think that's it, right? Wow, look at me forgetting my handle. Hold on. Yes, Blood Carnival on IG, and then um, Nasty on Instagram is like NAS underscore T3E on Instagram. You'll find me, you wanna talk to me. So yeah. IG and Instagram are the two platforms I'm active on. If you find me, go ahead. We could have discussions. You don't even have to book me, bro. If you wanna talk, I'm here too. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. Do you have any final tips or wisdom for the people listening to the pod? Um final tip or wisdom. Um 
Honor yourself, bro. Like, don't listen to anyone at all. Especially when, like, if that's something you really, really want to do. Like, ask for, like, little guidance as possible. Because chances are those things are what's going to delay your progress anyway. So just make all the mistakes that you make and then learn it. But just don't look for guidance elsewhere. If you have, like, a, a mentor, okay, but, like, don't ask... Don't even trust your friends. Like, yeah, they mean well, bro, but don't trust your friends with, with what you want to do with your life. Just aggressively be your own supporter, bro. Like, yes, like, get opinions here and there, but your opinion is what should matter. Like, in anything you do, just follow your own voice. That's all I have to say for, for like, anyone who want to be whatever. Just that feeling and that drive, just follow that, bro, and just go with it. Don't even listen to your family nothing just go that's it block out all the noise and then go full speed ahead trip up cry just do that on the way but just keep moving bro like just keep moving cry like eat your ice cream i don't know whatever you do when you're depressed be depressed feel all your, your emotions but just keep moving like whatever you do just keep moving that's my wise words for you people <laughs>